Why, hello there. Vin Diesel here. Oh, baby. Oh, why did I swing at that? Today, we'll be asserting our dominance in proving who is the most Sigma of males as we play the easiest sports game to spell using only autocorrect, MLB The Show. This journey will test our patience, our mental endurance, but most of all, it will test the very fabric that holds the game together. So what is the goal for Vin Diesel? Well, an MVP award is great and all, but you know what is way more memorable and captivating? What endears one to the nation for at least a few years before a terribly damaging PED scandal? A chase, a pursuit, an all-time record. In a game that lets you do almost anything you want as long as it requires a bat and a ball and you are forever trapped in this diamond-shaped prison you are surrounded by, there's a good deal of records we could possibly go for. Those are all great, but today we're getting down and dirty. The most stolen bases in a single season. In game, this record is currently held by Ricky Henderson. However, the show is a liar sometimes. Oh boy. According to Baseball Reference, Ricky's season is actually second all time behind a Scottish player named Hugh Nichols, who set the record in 1887 with 138 stolen bases. How Nichols did that with a 215 average in 125 games is beyond me but the target has been raised from 131 to 139 steals. Who will be stepping up to accomplish this monumental achievement? Only the fastest man in human history, Vin Diesel. Gentlemen, start your But I, I spent my afternoon doing this. I'm very proud of it. Every time I steal a base, uh, we can do this. Family. Upon starting a new career, you're given three options for what team you end up on. The profile's favorite, going to the human cattle auction, or manifesting your inner Sigma male and telling which professional sports team you're now a member of. Despite my massive debts at the casinos around me, I don't really consider myself a gambling addict. So I threw this decision over to my chat for them to choose what team Vin should end up on. Okay, so do we just take our risks in the draft, or do I just, like, choose a team? Last time we got drafted by the Cincinnati Reds, I think he's a second baseman. I don't really want to go on the Reds again. Their jerseys made me look shredded, but also it's the Cincinnati Reds, so it's like, eh? So what should we do? Do the athletics? Oh, my God. I would like to win. <laughs> no, I prefer to play for a different team. There, what? What is this? <laughs> Why is this the fourth best second base depth in the league? Athletics for the funny? I mean, I really do like them. I think we might need to go athletics. As the gears of democracy clicked, the combination of it'd be funny and Ricky Henderson strengthened Oakland's position enough. That's who we ended up going with for option three. To warm up and show what Vin Diesel is really made of, we played the first minor league game. Safe to say, he's the real deal. I made him look super shredded, and he will only hit blue pits. <laughs> like that. But he's fucking flying around these bases. For the rest of this first season, we simmed it out. The record is to steal the most bases in one full season, so being promoted in the middle of one only gives us less time to achieve our goal. It's best to start fresh at the beginning of the next full season. Before we could get sent up to the major leagues, or as some like to call it, the show, we were invited to play in the MLB Futures game. Now we were most likely going to simulate through this one as every other game had my stream and I not looked at the game's roster. Wait, what? Why is Jackie Bradley Jr. in the NL Futures game? Hasn't he been in the league a few years already? And Rob Refsnyder, who's also been in the league multiple times. Wait, there's two Rob Refsnyders. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> this is a cursed game, so we, we have to play it. Who is this other person? Why are there two Rob Refsnyders? What's going on? <laughs> 
nothing too much of significance happened during the futures game, so I took the time to announce the only real rule I had for myself in the entire challenge. I ha okay, I have made a rule to myself. If I can go for a base, I'm gonna go for the base. Dog, I was right there. <laughs> That's what I was doing in the previous attempts was I was just stopping at first and I was taking two. I was like, oh, that's kind of lame there because I was just like getting five bag games, five bag games. I was like, that's not what Ricky would do. WWRD, what would Ricky do? That's what we need to ask ourselves in life. Less than a month later, totally not in a sign of desperation, the Oakland Athletics called up their highly ranked prospect, Vin Diesel to the major leagues on August 13th, 2023. In his first professional at-bat, Vin earned his first hit. Now starts our pursuit of history. Coming to the start of our challenge, and boy did the A's have a surprise waiting for us. In the off-season, while Vin was in his hyperbolic chamber preparing for the season, the team had done the impossible. The Oakland are. Athletics had signed a player. Not just anyone, but Vin Diesel's best friend. We what? We signed Shohei Otani. <laughs> okay, I'll take uh, that W. Athletics moment, accidentally signing Otani. Let's do this. I wanted to see Vin Diesel. Just for clarification, and I guess any possible claims of rigging, you cannot influence free agency in this mode. Otani was just so swayed by the allure of playing with his best friend, Vin Diesel, that he's okay with the possums at Oakland Stadium, the sad state the team is in, and the uncertain future that they might not even remain in the state of California. Let us witness the power of this friendship. Did Otani just fucking crush one? Me and Otani, best of friends. Let's go Oakland. Oakland, and then it's like O-H. <laughs> oh, that, what, a, what a moment. Otani and Vin Diesel shaking hands at a home plate. Fueled by that home run and the meaning of friendship, we snagged our first stolen base later that same game. Yes. Family. We got one. 139 to go. Seconds after insulting this pitcher, we further insult him by getting Vin's first home run of the season. Jared Dickoff. Oh. <laughs> that was an accidental home run. Make no mistake about it. He's as surprised as we are. On a mad scramble, Vin grabs his third steal of the year, then advances to third base on a bad throw. Get up, you slow fuck. Yes. Oh, what? They don't give me the second one? That's bullshit. The masturbator just hit a home run. Our best friend Otani crushes a moonshot, and we are treated to an absolutely cursed animation none of us will ever forget. Was that 412? 466! Jesus Christ! We're at sea level! Good lord! 109. Oh, what? <laughs> that was cursed. That was a cursed animation right there. I'm not the only 99 on this team. I think Otani might actually be better than me. We're going to the chip. Guys, let Fisher cook, alright? We know what he's doing. We're going to the Super Bowl, boys. We're never going to lose again. To afford our best friend's contract, it meant some expenses in Oakland were going to be cut back on. Nothing that would affect the quality of the team, though. Why are there half the lights on at this stadium? Do you guys see that? Only half the lights are on. Only half the lights are on. <laughs> Fisher's really running this team cheap. He's just going hardcore cheapo. See, half the lights are on in this stadium currently. Wait, where is Otani? Has this team won more than two games so far? We have Otani. Do we have Otani? Is he still on this team? Did he just like give up? Did he retire? Maybe he's on our bench. Where is he? Is he injured? Okay, after this series, we're gonna check to see where Otani is. And so that'll make it a four nothing ball game. I don't know if I'll be putting on this headset again. I don't know if it's going to be for the Reds. I don't know if it's going to be for my bosses at Fox. 
God damn it. Torn labrum. As we stole our 10th base of the season, I could feel us getting closer. At this point, we only had to steal more bases than all but two teams did all of last season as one person. No problem. While we did get off track a little bit looking at a music video recommended by Chad and some artwork inspired by Vin's pursuit of greatness, we mainly kept on course. The second day of our pursuit saw us getting into form, just like when Vin Diesel played the father of Indiana Jones. We've seen him flex the pythons before and smash a home run, but why do that when Vin is the fastest man alive? Oh, I'm getting this inside the Parker. Stand up inside the Parker. Stand up inside the Parker. It's that easy. That's who we do it for. After being blessed with some high-level gamer tips from my cat on how to steal, we went on an absolute tear, more than doubling the total from the last stream in a fraction of the time. Yes. Oh yeah. One thing to keep in mind though, Vin Diesel is only man. He isn't perfect. There's room to get better. That's court. why he played this weird mini game to improve his hand-eye coordination. After breaking the 40th steel mark, we encountered our biggest enemy on this quest for the record, defensive indifference. If the game is a blowout and there's no chance of a comeback, which let's be honest, I'm on the Oakland Athletics, that's gonna happen a lot the infielders will simply not try to stop the base stealer. When the defense makes no attempt to throw out a base runner attempting to steal, a stolen base is not awarded on defensive indifference. Meaning not only is the game joker for us, but the steal I just got doesn't even count. Thanks, Obama. Yes. Oh, are they counting that as defensive indifference? Oh, that's such bullshit. They're not gonna count that as one because no one tried. That's bullshit. That makes me angry. Unbelievable. They're not going to count that because no one tried to defend that. Only surrounding himself with the smartest and most sigma of people, Vin received a call from his agent noticing something unusual about his stolen base total. Vin Diesel responded the only way he possibly could. I think I'm feeling beep beep. Beep beep. Oh, my shirt changed. Yeah, beep beep like a Sienna. Call me a psychological wimp all you want, but the swing we were using just wasn't getting us the results we needed. Switching that up gave us the Sigma grind set that all self-made billionaires always possess. After a while, doing so much stealing really starts to make you question your own integrity. Am I right or wrong? Am I a hero or a villain? On the spectrum of morality, where do I land? Most of all, it leads to important philosophical discussions like arguing with your own stream chat about why Ghost Rider is definitely the most badass superhero of all time. Let's stick to the comics here. Okay, apart from the Obama Spider-Man comic, I don't think I've read any other Spider-Man comic. The only superhero that matters is Ghost Rider because Nick Cage played him. That's a big fact. Go watch the Nick Cage Ghost Rider movies and tell me they're not goaded. Dog, he's a, he's a stuntman who makes a deal with the devil, and in return, he gets a face made out of a skull. I'm not saying Spider-Man isn't not cool. I'm just saying Ghost Rider is more cool, okay? He wears leather jackets, but he's mid. Bro, they had him riding like a flaming woolly mammoth in one of the comics. Has Spider-Man ever ridden a flaming woolly mammoth? I don't think so. He's a collector for the devil or something. I don't fully understand that part. After blasting a home run to finally claim all of Canada for the United States once and for all, our push brought us to the second most important steal of the entire run, the funny number. Not only is it hilarious, but it perfectly works out as the halfway point for our challenge. 138 divided by two is 69. Unfortunately, the game did not give us any fanfare for this incredibly special event. After getting boned on both a defensive indifference call and then another inside the park home run, we arrived at the all-star break. Somebody. With our steals approaching 80, our pace was keeping on track for the record. We'll take it. Oh, I gotta do it. Family. 
Shockingly, with our three home runs on the season, we were overlooked for the home run derby, just like when Vin was overlooked by the Oscars for his performance in Goodfellas. As we finished up the All-Star game, it had been nearly 48 whole hours since Vin last got his pump on. He had to get his pump on. <sighs> I'm the strongest man in the world. Returning from the All-Star break, I was excited to resume our record chase. All right, let's do it. Perhaps a bit too excited. Is that Reggie? What if they trade me midseason? <laughs> that would be fucking shit. Wait, what? What the fuck just happened? What the fuck just happened? Diesel might have just played the last game of the season? What the hell? What the fuck? No. First Otani and now Vin Diesel. <laughs> oh, but we won. <laughs> but we won the game, thank God. Words cannot fully describe what I was experiencing here. I play a lot of this mode. In all of that time, I had never gotten this severe of an injury this late into the season, and especially never when attempting a challenge like this for a video. This is the worst thing. Hold on, we need this for emotional support. Family. All right, there we go. Shoulder tear. <laughs> Motherfucker. Due to the severity of the injury. What was he doing the night before? <laughs> Vin Diesel and Shohei Otani on the IR. He's trained himself lifting. The yeah, exactly. But in the wise words of Chef Gordon Ramsay. Fuck right off. Fuck off. Take him and yourself back to fucking Belgium. Using those inspirational words from Chef Ramsay, we didn't give up. We didn't give in. We only got more jacked for the next season. But first, there was something we had to take care of. We need to have an entourage for Vin. All right, this is very important. This is going to be Vin Diesel's entourage, obviously. So let's just put that in there. Obviously, Otani's in the entourage. Oh, that's perfect. Another member of Vin Diesel's posse. You are not. There we go. Even though they're on rival teams in the same division, J.P. Crawford, they met at a gallery, like a, an art gallery, and they really connected over the art. That's how they became friends. Also in Vin Diesel's entourage, the Pope. And then we need a badass woman. He's not sexist. He's the opposite of sexist. Oh, this is good. This is this is squad goals right here. We might have room for one more member of the entourage. Oh, yeah, this is perfect. And that had to do it to you, guy. He's there too. <laughs> Let me uh, export this out. There we go. Now we always know who's rocking with us. Motivated by lost time, we started out the season with a way faster pace than we had last year. Even with the comically bad pickles we sometimes found ourselves in. Okay, I'll say it. Logan Gilbert does not look good with a goatee. Just not good. Maybe he could rock a Fu Manchu. Maybe he just cuts the bottom part out and lets it go. Son of a... He heard me talking shit about his fucking goatee. And he was like, no. <laughs> You're not going to talk shit about my goatee. I'm going to pick you off. I wonder if both Rob Reschneiders are in the league right now. Yeah, this is a pretty cursed one. This is a very cursed road to the show. Okay, Oppo Taco for fucking Vin Diesel. Oh yeah, me, me and Otani. Let's go. I think that was my sixth career home run. Oh, who was I just hugging there? Cranking moonshot number one and then taking stolen base numbers 23 and 24 put us into a deep philosophical mood. It led us to discuss the centuries-old metaphysical question. Does Dodgers ace Clayton Kershaw look like the Minotaur? Look at those nicknames they have for him. The Claw or the Minotaur. I'm sorry, if you give me a card in this game that reads the Minotaur, I'm grinding that motherfucker to the, the highest level possible. God damn it. I want a guy named the Minotaur. Just Hold on, let's compare Kershaw and the real Minotaur. Oh yeah, that's okay. I can see it. Clayton Kershaw. I can see it. I can definitely see it. Do you guys not see this? Yeah, no, I can definitely see where they're getting at this. 
What up, Minotaur? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. You have made a good point. All right. All right. Hold on. We need to add Minotaur. Prima has made a great suggestion, which is we are adding a Minotaur to Vin's entourage. Oh, fuck yeah, Minotaur. Now we're rolling deep. Monty, you got to move out of my direct screen. While it is true we were stealing more bases this season than last year, it was also true we were getting thrown out more times as well. After a particularly nasty looting against Texas taking multiple bags. Dude, wasn't, wasn't Nathan just pitching last night? Wasn't this guy just pitching the previous game? He's a workhorse. Nice. Let's do it. Family. They got revenge themselves, doubling my dumb ass up. Shit, I need to get back. 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 I thought that was gone. I thought that was gone. I thought that was gone. Oh. I thought Otani fucking rocked that one. He hit it to the deepest, farthest corner of the fucking field, and that's why it didn't go out. Oh, no, it got way too much airtime. Whatever, whatever. Playing against Anaheim or Los Angeles or California or whatever the fuck they're going to call themselves after Otani leaves for Oakland, Vin embarrasses them further by sending their asses to Denny's with a grand slam. Oh, God. Base is juice. Oh, that would actually be so funny when we sent them to fucking... Oh. 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 <laughs> We're going to Denny's. Let's fucking do it! Unreal. Bam! With both our stolen bases and caught stealing numbers steadily going up, I remained confident the record would eventually be broken. Playing this weird jumping minigame somehow definitely got me better at baseball, and then magically, we were approaching the halfway mark slash funny number in our journey. Things were looking great for us. What is this shot? Okay. Our extremely intelligent agent gave us another call, checking in again and asking about a possible second attempt at the record. We responded in the most logical way possible. Beep beep, car impression? Oh yeah, it is true. It's like his car. It is very much like his car. It's, it's in character for Vin Diesel. Did his clothes just change? Did, did his clothes just change? <laughs> we then continue with the same level of glowing success as a nuclear waste storage facility. The Brew Crew, MLB's most functioning alcoholic team, somehow used their liquid courage to fake us out and catch Vin running. Trying for steel number, funny number, and we have our first Pokemon encounter this season with Vin's arch rival, Defensive Indifference. Both steals here would have counted if it weren't for that stupid rule. They didn't give it to me again. Rebuilding myself from this tragic situation, I then reconnected with my emotional support base when I stole base number 69. Nice. At this point in the run, I had grown to become very trigger happy when it came trying to steal. I meant that in the context of baseball. It soon became a back and forth chess-like match between Vin and the defense. I steal two bases off of you, you double me off a of fly ball, you gun me down two times, I snag a pair off of you. The triple play I was the main culprit of. Let's not talk about that. Fucking shit. Come on, I got on with no one ahead of me and I didn't get one stolen base. I don't know what multiverse of madness we were playing in, but of every team we faced, no catcher gave us more trouble than the Royals' MJ Melendez. For anyone out of the loop, Melendez is considered to be one of the worst upcoming catching prospects in the entire league. So for him to be the one who cracks the code and shuts what? down Vin Diesel's rampage like this? Know what? Impressive. That's all I can say. Impressive. Vin put that all behind him and got his pump on once again. Despite getting a pair of pickles with our entree, even though Vin explicitly said to the waitress he wanted a side of fries, we were approaching the big nine zero. Fucking shit, goddammit. Uh. Nice. Family. But then, our rival struck again. Oh, are they not going to give that to me? They're going to say that's defensive indifference? Bruh. I hate defensive indifference. That's like the fourth one tonight, too. That's what pisses me off. Yeah, fucking Alejandro Kirk. 
Now for some quick context. In a previous stream of mine, during one of my ADHD-induced rabbit holes, I introduced my chat to the subreddit of Natty or Juice, a fitness community for people to discuss whether or not someone has ever been juicing or if they are indeed a filthy casual. For some reason, my chat loves this place. Here is a quick sample of some of the intellectual discussion happening on Natty or Juiced. Is my 17-year-old son on any types of PEDs? Leg lengthening surgery? Guys, if you get your legs lengthened, does that mean you're not Natty anymore? It's ideal. Oh, Mike Tyson. I know he was probably on steroids, but is this Natty achievable for someone his height and weight? Bro, you're not Mike Tyson. Even if he's not juicing, Mike Tyson is a one, like a 0.00001% specimen. You can't get this naturally without like it being genetic. He's also on a shitload of like cocaine. Forget steroids, the real crazy part of Tyson's story is that he was eating a handful of antidepressants for breakfast every morning and chasing it with a quarter ounce of coke up his nose. That's what I'm saying. This isn't natural like body enhancement. His mind is just numb. He doesn't sense fear. So I guess, yeah, achievable for someone his height and size. Guys, can I be Mike Tyson? Feeling ready to go in, we had to bring something along with us on our journey from the knowledge we had collected during our pit stop. Oh, wait, what? Oh, fuck yeah. Hold on. This is what I'm working towards. This is hard. Hold on. There we go. Trying for steal number 90, we immediately got fucked over by defensive indifference again. Yeah, yeah, it, it's not gonna count, yay. The fourth time this year. That didn't concern me too much though. A much more pressing matter was already among us, the all-star break. For the second year in a row, we got overlooked for the home run derby. It's whatever, they obviously have an agenda against us. Nervously, Vin walked onto the field for the game against the Minnesota Twins after the all-star break. It had been just about a year since he had torn his shoulder and crashed his record attempt. This season was going to be different though. He might have grounded out the first at bat of that game. All right, we're already doing better than last season. But in the sixth, he drilled a game-tying RBI double. Oh, that's what I like to hear. To finish up the rest of that stream, Vin was motivated both by the second half of this season as well as it being the two-year anniversary of that time he starred in the Barbie movie. So, he went on a fucking tear. Beginning just a smidge under 100 steals, I was determined to accomplish our goal with one final stream. What I thought was a good idea would eventually cause this entire journey's final leg to descend into madness. Things started off very strong with Otani walking off the Red Sox and then the whole squad posting up for the cameras. Sitting at steal number 99 and the canyon's edge of sanity, I then showed off to chat a fun little gadget I had made off stream, an AI chatbot. Sorry, I misspoke, an AI catbot. Hey there, Monty. As your cat, Monty, I graciously accept this role of supreme importance. I, the feline emperor, rule over my kingdom with grace and charm. Remember, feeding me is your greatest honor and I expect nothing less than royal treatment. Meow. With the power of tomorrow upon us now, we then immediately asked it to write us a poem about Seattle Mariners catcher, Cal Raleigh, AKA Big Dumper. Could you please write me a haiku about the baseball player, Cal Raleigh? Yeah, this is... Oh. In the realm of baseball, a legend stands tall. A player adorned with skill and a spirit enthralled. His name, Cal Raleigh, the heartbeat of the game. Cal Raleigh, a star shining bright in the sun, forever cherished long after the game is done. What the fuck? Okay, Monty. <laughs> that was a great poem, Monty. Thank you. I'm glad you liked it. 
This was maybe one of the few times in the whole run I was actually visibly frustrated. I fucked up the slide on this steal attempt for number 100, still being held to double digits. That poem stuck inside my head. Wait, never mind. 100. What fucking Godric? Family. Then, guess who's back? Yep, it's Genghis Khan. Nope, just Genghis kidding. It's defensive indifference fucking us over again. I get boned on all these defensive indifference calls. Legit, I should have 10 more stolen bases. Seeing Vin crush a home run in Colorado only brought one thing to my chat's mind. Is he fully clean? Having gone this far into the attempt, we just wanted to make sure that this record will fully pass the sniff test. There's only one place that can answer all of our questions. Vin Diesel, Juiced or Natty. Look at this photo. Hell yeah. Juice, all those guys. Stallone, The Rock, Terry Crews, Wahlberg, any big action star. Okay, Mark Wahlberg is not a big action star. Maybe Bruce Willis is the exception. Bruce Willis? Why would you choose Bruce Willis as your exception? From this rabbit hole of Vin Diesel speculation and slander, we eventually found ourselves here on the greatest source of knowledge and information to be assembled since the Library of Alexandria, Kiora. Let us all meet Mr. Potato, who has a different perspective on this whole steroids thing. Does Vin Diesel use steroids? The first thing you have to put in consideration is why would he not? If you think about steroids as cheating or easy road to looking jacked, then the fault is in your perspective. Steroids, especially for people like Vin Diesel that owns and runs a billion dollar movie franchise, are a tool. His physique is not something the bards will sing songs about in a million years from now. It's really pretty achievable naturally. To grind out your natty gains takes a lot of consistency and discipline. You can get there, but it takes time. Vin is not particularly consistent, and there is no incentive for him to restrict himself too much and consume his time and energy building the muscle the hard way. This makes steroids, as a tool, a great one. So yeah, Vin is on gear. Thank you for reading this piece. If you hate boring and half-assed content, give this goddamn thing a thumbs up so more people can see it. Praise Broaden, keep them gains coming, kisses, Mr. Potato. What the fuck is going on here? My head hurts. This guy is insane. Is that how you grow on the internet? You have to just talk random nonsense? Maybe it was because of what we had just read. Maybe it was because Vin had tested clean. Or maybe it was because we were facing MJ Melendez again. But Vin was getting cooked and running into pickles time and time again. Ah, he was, not me. I do all the accomplishments. He does all the failures. Oh, and to explain the Andrew McCutcheon furry card in the corner, um, Descent into Madness? Anyway, and then it happened. We're playing the Washington Nationals. Hitting a ground ball to the shortstop, Vin tries to leg it out. Coming in a second too late, I was frustrated by the out, but not phased. Until... It happened again. Vin is being pulled for an injury. My heart had gone from its normal resting rate of about 130 beats per minute to like 200 in a matter of seconds. My mind starts racing on that sideline. Would I have to restart for a third time? Was this entire second run a goner too? Should I schedule a checkup with my doctor? And then... Okay, good. We were back. back, baby. Run saved. I don't need to go see a doctor. After this brush with death, Vin and I both craved inspiration. Since my Oppenheimer I Am Become Death inspirational poster has yet to show up from Amazon, we went with Inspirabot, an AI inspirational quote bot. It is also deranged. What's that motivation website? Oh, Inspirabot. That's what it is. This was the first thing that came up on Inspirabot. Thank you. Thought Inspirabot talks to you. Turn on your speakers and press start to artificially in generate infinite amounts of force. Keep your eyes closed. Begin to feel the pressure of your nose pulling you into the floor. Long ago, in ancient Tibet, there was a humble soldier who was searching for a new life. When he spotted an unmarried whore, dearest whore, 
Can you please tell me where a humble soldier like myself find a new wife? He asked the whore. The soldier thought long and hard about the whore's answer. Then he went to sleep. The following winter the soldier finally understood what the whore had meant. And then he died. Okay, wait, wait. This is what they just said. Open up your belly button. As our screen's entourage grew with the addition of Cal Raleigh and Coupe, a character from Civilization VI voiced by The Rock, and another appearance from our Joker, Defensive Indifference, the absolute nonsense from Inspirabot finally started to sink in. Going on an all-out blitz, Vin leaped from 104 steals to 116 in the flash of an eye. Just like when Vin... As his steel total grew, so did the amount of shit on my screen. Breaking the 120th stolen base mark, we are now only 10 bases away from tying Ricky's record and 18 away from Hugh Nichols, having truly been inspired. I'll say it guys, I'm inspired right now. And reaching within five steals of Ricky Henderson's record, I thought it was time to turn off Inspirabot. End this. I'm gonna end Inspirabot because I'm getting scared what's going to happen is it totally wasn't because we had been listening to it for over an hour and a half and any more of it I was going to lose my fucking mind coming into the series against the Motor City Kitties we had more steals on the season than brain cells currently operating I was beyond fried and only wanted to get this done First inning, we tap an RBI single and take stolen base number 129. Ricky Henderson, sitting at a cafe in Paris, France, feels a single drop of sweat roll down his cheek. Our next at bat, oh. Vin pokes a single to left field and we all get ready to witness history. With our entourage watching, Vin digs in and dodges the pickoff okay. attempt. Okay, second try. Beating the throw by about 25 minutes, Vin slides in tying the game's record for most stolen bases in a single season. They give us a nice little acknowledgement of our record, but the game isn't fast enough. On the very next pitch, Vin is off for third, trying to set a new record. Safe. Ricky Henderson just fell to his knees in a cafe in Paris, France. Now, we're given a banner on screen and a cutscene of Vin receiving hugs, handshakes, and an ovation from the crowd. Please, do the same yourself. After the game was over, we took a chance to go look over the records in-game, and wouldn't you know who was listed right there? We were! Now it's time to end the discussion over who's the all-time stolen base king. It's not a dude from the 1800s. It's not the all-time stolen base leader. It's the dude who starred in Apollo 13. Even though we were this far into the run, Vin now encountered his most Sigma challenge yet. First, an Astros team of all hogged up hitters. And then, Framber Valdez starting in literally back-to-back -back games. And now it's Valdez? Great. Wait, what? Didn't he pitch yesterday? Didn't he pitch the last game? Didn't he just pitch that last game? Not phased by this, we chipped away and in game three of the series, the Astros finally gave Framber a day off. We are also at steal number 137, one away from settling history. 137. Hugh Nichols, probably sitting inside his coffin, feels a single drop of sweat roll down his cheek. Sliding into second, we had done it. We had tied Nichols for the all-time record. 138 stolen bases in a single season. Weirdly, there was no special cutscene or anything for tying this extremely obscure baseball record only found online. How odd. With the next available chance, we made our move. Family. Not only did Vin slide into third base, but he slid into the history books. The undisputed single season stolen base record holder. We fucking did it. Vin must have been on fire that day, or maybe Luis Severino has a slow-ass wind-up. But regardless, we ended the game with five steals for a grand total of 142 bases on the season.
We went over to the record book one last time to bask in the glory of Vin Diesel. Forty-two stolen bases for him. And then I ended stream from sheer delirium. So we did it. Mission accomplished. The only real casualty being my brain cells at the end of the run. Finishing out the rest of the season after the stream had concluded, Vin ended the year with 151 steals, a new baseball record. So, think you can do better? Yeah, you do. I can see it in your eyes right now. You know you can do better. Well, if you're up for the challenge, there's only two requirements. Beat my record on All-Star or a harder difficulty and make sure your name winds up in that record book. Then, when you best me, come into my stream chat and gloat. But you better have the proof. I am an all-time record holder after all. I wish you the best of luck. The lie detector determined that was a lie. Oh!